All right, welcome back for episode seven of this Let's Play as the Italians. I'm gonna start getting some more recruitment going before I end this turn. So, more militia from Tuscany, some more sailors from Genoa. We got a new ship over here in Crete. So we'll send that over to the Nile coast start getting some trade this this is probably the most important port honestly it's probably not a big deal to get guys in the uh, dodecanese and the eastern mediterranean because of the provinces they grant access to but tripoli and palestine should be good along with egypt so that'll be our first one we'll send our our spare galleys to i do have construction queued up where i want it just we'll keep getting some guys here did i get any more agents I have titles to give out, but I'm going to hold on to those. Might be worth getting some more agents to keep an eye on the Hungarians. And also the advance of the Golden Horde. So, one thing I had talked about wanting to do was sending a spy to shadow... Okay, so I'm already doing the, the King of Hungary. <clears throat> Looks like I have not done so with the Turks. Those are the only two factions I'm at war with, right? Quick diplomacy check here. And actually, another thing I should check is the points. So we've only had one round of scoring right now. But I do want to keep track of this so I can pick my targets in case someone starts getting ahead. So we're going to go for more... Spies in Constantinople, and then I can send reinforcements from elsewhere if I need to. See if they can afford some reinforcements over there. Yep. So we'll fight that. At least from what I was seeing visually, it looks like that's a, a fight to take. Yeah, Dodge Enrico is gonna, gonna crush this guy. Much better command, more forces. Nice, okay. King of Hungary passed. So they got a new guy. Uh oh. Well, they were in first place and now they are gone, so that was probably. Well, it must have been the Golden Horde that did that. Okay, so that's a little scary. Interesting, the Sicilians are taking Northern Africa. Are they at war with the Egyptians? Not yet. <clears throat> okay, so this guy will... Where do we want him? Send them up to Valenia. Where is their new king? Is he inside of one of these castles? Am I missing something? There should be like a big model for this guy. Oh, okay. Here he is. <laughs> Alright. I am a little blind. So, <clears throat> we'll send our spy after him. Got to pull some negative traits out of the guy. Resort troops over here. Hungary. They do not seem to have what they need to reinforce here. But what I'm going to do is, if they're gonna if they're gonna save the capital, they're gonna have to do so from Bulgaria, which should give me a good counterattacking area. So let's keep troops flowing in to Croatia. And normally I would wait and queue up some troops or, or let them amass as I'm training them. But in this situation, I'm going to send guys straight over. 
because it's going to allow me a little bit more flexibility turn to turn as far as sending guys in to reinforce the attacking squad in Hungary. So, yeah, that's enough. And they can only hold out for two turns. So in case someone's not familiar with the with the game and you're seeing the number one and I'm saying two, basically when you're sieging somewhere and they say it'll hold out for one year, you end your turn and that's the one year and then they have one more turn to uh, to surrender or fight, fight out. So. <clears throat> so that's basically where we are. So in Venice, just finish the armor. Let's go for a church to start giving morale to these troops. Recruitment will leave the same. We'll probably hold off on getting guys here. <clears throat> Crete, I don't still, I feel I don't need to do anything in Crete still. Excuse my voice. I'm telling you, this whatever I got has been lasting the longest time. It's been over a week. Okay. Another easy fight for the dodge. Okay. Fortunately. Okay, so did I finish construction anywhere that I wasn't paying attention? <clears throat> Looks like no. Where's these guys up here? Got plenty more to send over. <clears throat> you can see they're really starting to get whittled down here. Another spy over... I think I had a guy headed to Valenia. Oh, you know what? I'm realizing a game mechanic. This is why spies and emissaries... This is another difference between spies and emissaries. If you have an emissary sitting in someone's province, you are getting information from them, but you're not a threat to cause any damage to their lords in revealing negative attributes or anything like that. So spies are going to get killed by guards, emissaries are not. So if you want consistent stable vision somewhere, you send an emissary. And right now that's mostly what I'm looking for. I still do want to shadow their, uh, their king with a spy, but as far as getting vision on what the Golden Horde is up to versus them on the north border and Poland, that's what the spies is. All right, that's what the emissaries are going to be for. So, money is still going up. So, I'm just going to keep doing recruitment. Kill three turns this time. Okay, so we'll do that. And honestly, I might as well start getting guys from over here. Croatia. Some Slavic warriors. Looks like the siege timer changed up. Sometimes, if there's an attack that disrupts, or a counterattack that disrupts the siege, it'll change the timer on the um, siege holdout. So, I'm going to send this emissary up to Valenia. And. It should be good as far as construction and troop movement. Yep. Having some fairly quick turns. I feel like there's not as much strategizing to do right now. The circumstances haven't changed diplomatically or whatever. You can see the crusade from the Spanish arriving in Northern Africa. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, as soon as I say that, I feel like that was like the uh, commentators or the castle's curse. Okay, 
English Crusade, you won a Tripoli, and a new son. That was the Germans that had just attacked us, right? Oh boy, that was the last thing I was hoping for. So, <clears throat> yeah. Well, the good thing is that I continued expanding my my forces on the borders here. So I think I'll shell out some of these guys from Tuscany to each of these provinces. Excuse me, my, my throat just made a weird noise there. <laughs> Okay, we got a princess that we can send out to marry. I'm assuming the lords are doing good on loyalty still. This guy could probably use... Okay, Milan is maybe a, a questionable territory for that. Let's check the other ones and make sure no one else needs to be prioritized. Creed. Yeah, so we'll marry the princess to this guy from Milan. If you're not as familiar with the game, when you marry a princess to a lord, it increases their loyalty to the family. I'm honestly not sure if it does much outside of that. Okay. Constantinople, we got a new emissary, so we'll send him up to. And now it's gonna be time to start sending guys up towards the Germans because I'll keep queuing these boys up. Another ship over here. And this boy over to the Eastern Mediterranean. And soon we're going to want to start training ships to potentially push the Gulf of Lions. I'm not sure how much, how important sea battle is going to be against the Germans, but we can see they've got a good amount of troops stored up over here decent quality as well financially we're still we're still doing very well so recruitment is not going to be a problem <clears throat> the issue is that we're going to be fighting a two-front war now hungary is down to one two three four five six provinces and their troops are fading away fairly quickly So let's get some more reinforcements heading over into Hungary. What else can we spare? They got six squads with a three-star general. I think we can send that amount of guys and still be safe here in Croatia. Okay, cool. And no more vision up here yet. Is there anywhere I need to move an emissary out of or a spy out of? Spy, one him shadowing the king. This guy is, he might as well come over here. So are there any other provinces I need to convert? Crete is in a very good situation. Yeah, I'll get a dockyard here in Crete. Crete can kind of be my backup naval construction or naval recruitment province. Damn, I can't believe the Turks lost this battle. I guess they have some some decent in, uh, troops in there. So now we're going to be expanding vision in the German provinces beyond the immediate border and figuring out how much resources need to be invested into protecting Northern Italy. <clears throat> because of how expanded the infrastructure is in Northern Italy, that needs to be my priority as far as protection as opposed to Hungary or Croatia. Hmm, man. Okay, took Hungary finally. A lot of good construction. Oh, 
Okay. What do we want to do with Hungary? No special troops here. So, part of me is thinking to not build this by tracking the king. Part of me is thinking to not build economic stuff when I'm taking these new territories. For the most part, all the territories I do have held, I've got all the economic infrastructure I want, which is why my income is so good. But I'm going to be recruiting extra hard, so I don't want to do a hard stop on economic infrastructure. I want to make sure that I'm scaling appropriately. And as we're at war with another faction, the need to constantly recruit troops and replenish lost troops is still there. So I don't want to get overconfident with my economic situation. So we've got another spy over here. I don't remember training him, but... All right, let's get him... I almost want to shadow the Khan of the Golden Horde, but at the same time, I'm not sure if that'll make an enemy out of them by doing so. So, I think I already have a guy queued up to go to Switzerland. Send someone over to Toulouse. Got some newly recruited troops over in Corsica and Sardinia that we can send out. So let's send them over into... Oh boy, they're disrupting my boat lanes. What do they got here? So, just a bark. We'll hit that thing. Quick time check. 17 minutes. Okay, we're getting close. So we'll attack the bark. Hopefully win that. That is a cue for me to train some more ships. Actually gonna get some war galleys from Venice. And then keep up recruitment in these areas. There will be three more turns worth of recruitment. And what I mean by that is by recruiting a, a, a ship in both Venice and Genoa, that's going to add three turns of recruitment to them, so I'm just going to reflect that in Tuscany and Milan. I guess I'll do the same in Corsica and in Sardinia. You can see I can get feudal men-at-arms from Sardinia now. <clears throat> So it looks like I did have some extra construction queued up, so I don't need to add anything. And is that all I want to do? Let's merge up our troops in Hungary and then see what, who we want to assign to be our lord. So this is just going to give straight loyalty. Wow. Okay, four Ackerman Militia Sergeants. That's going to be our standout guy for now. Spearman. Okay. Unless someone has more acumen than that, I'm just gonna skip by everybody else. Finding someone with five plus acumen is pretty rare. Okay, there we go. There's our lord in Hungary. Now, what do we want to do with the dodge? <clears throat> So my gut tells me to attack Serbia and Greece and leave these provinces. And the rationale there is that the further north I attack, the more immediate I'm going to have, or the more immediately or the sooner I'm going to have a, <clears throat> excuse me, a border with the Golden Horde. The longer I can delay that, the better. I want to end this war against Hungary by eliminating them and then secure my border against the Golden Horde. And then I can refocus myself onto the Germans. And this is going to be interesting because now that we're at war with another Catholic faction, although I guess we're at war with, we've been at war with the Hungarians. One thing that's confusing to me is why have neither of us been excommunicated? I swear that still happens in this game. I don't think that's just in Medieval 2. But... I'm not sure how that happens. Maybe it's only if you attack the Papacy or something like that in Medieval 1. Or maybe if you're at war with a certain number of other Catholic factions. That's curious. 
Maybe we'll figure that out during this campaign. But for now, let's keep on distributing troops around here. Venice has got to be the the uh, priority. Look at the income of this place. 2,700. 2,768 income. That's immense. So Burgundy is where they got the biggest stack of troops, but I think we got a comfortable amount of guys over in Milan to hold against that. Probably want to start to switch, switching troops across these, this border. Send some sailors over here and send some militia sergeants and Italian infantry over Genoa just so we have a healthy troop mix of both. And that is a good time to stop. So again on the next episode we are going to be still keeping an eye on Constantinople and we're going to be hoping to finish off Hungary or at least make some progress doing so avoid war with the Golden Horde while potentially getting some more emissaries up here and seeing what they're doing how their combat against Poland is going and um, yeah that's basically it so Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next episode.